Hey everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Interstellar Modeler. Uh, while I'm waiting for parts to get in for my Mobius Colonial Viper, and the original series Viper, um, I decided to start work on this F-104 Starfighter. Um, I was at a um, um, model building contest uh, not long ago, and there were a bunch of vendors there, and I came across this kit for six bucks, so I really couldn't pass it up. And uh, I've always liked this uh, particular fighter because it is the fighter that we see in the episode Tomorrow's Yesterday in the original series as it confronts the Enterprise um, going back in time. So, um, I've decided to just go ahead and uh, put this one together. Uh, in my book it's always called Blue J4 because that's what it was called in, in the episode. And um, so yeah, I, was, I figured it'd be a good opportunity to show you uh, another example of um, how to cover seams and uh, deal with those types of things. Um, so let me show you uh, what I've done so far. Alright, so this is where I am at this point. Um, I've already pieced the main fuselage together. There really wasn't much to it. I, I uh, painted these, these areas here in the cockpit um, and primed the model. Uh, what I have to work on now are the seams, so I thought this would be a good opportunity again to show how that's done. So along the uh, length of the kit there is a seam, obviously because these two halves are pieced together. Uh, the seam isn't too bad, it's not very significant. So uh, how I hide seams depends on how significant they are, at least I should say what I use to hide them depends on how prominent the seam is. And uh, so since this one isn't too bad, I'm going to use this Pro Weld um, adhesive here. Um, as the name implies, the, the adhesive is going to actually weld or melt the plastic together. And uh, so um, it's fairly easy to use. It comes with this brush applicator, which is really nice. It gives you nice, good control uh, when applying it. And you just brush it along the uh, length of the seam. And you can uh, do it a few times if you wish. Uh, and you allow it to dry, and then you start sanding. So I'm starting off with a 200 grit sandpaper, and then uh, moving on upward to finer grits until we finally um, polish the seam away. So as you can see here, I started working on this side, and uh, you can see um, uh, by the light here where the pro weld has been applied to the length of the seam here. So I started working on that side as well. And uh, so yeah, I'll keep going along here and um, show you the end result. Okay, and uh, so here we are. And uh, oh, by the way, before I go on, there is a bunch of construction going on in the house next door. So if there's some background noise there, just bear with me on that. Um, but getting back to the seam here, you can see uh, the seam was um, uh, nicely covered here using the Pro Weld um, adhesive. And then I did use a little bit of Mr. Dissolve Putty here because there were a couple areas there that were a little deeper. Uh, but a few applications of that and sanding it and uh, basically polishing again that surface because I went up to about a thousand grit sandpaper uh, covered it quite nicely. Okay, so one other challenge is putting these uh, engine covers here um, and the instructions show how that's done. You have a inner piece here along with this covering and by doing so it's going to create a seam now on the top and the bottom of that covering along and also along the side here um, too. So um, uh, the covers were put into place and um, I first treated the seam on the side uh, here with the same um, technique except uh, with this one I used basically the Mr. Dissolve Putty and I just worked at that and uh, you can see it hit it pretty well. And then the bigger seams now are going to be on the top and the bottom because the piece does not lay against the fuselage very well. Uh, there actually is a pretty big opening from the side of the cover and the side of the plane. Um, I have a, a much deeper seam to work with here. So uh, in those cases I use a different type of putty. This one's called plastic putty and uh, I uh, bought it from uh, the local hobby store. Um, labels kind of um, smudged up here, but uh, anyway, it's a thicker uh, putty. What I like about this bottle here is that it has a, a, a finer tip that you can use to apply the uh, putty onto the area that you are working with. Uh, unlike the ones that come in a tube, um, this I think is just easier to work with. Um, so I've applied um, several layers of this putty here, uh, or several applications. Each time I did so, I use a hair dryer, which by the way is a good tool to have by your workbench because as you're painting or doing things that you need to dry or, or want to have dried quickly, um, you can uh, definitely get some use out of a hair dryer. Don't have to spend a ton of money on that, just as long as it has a heat setting um, and a cool setting, depending on what you're doing, um, it's, it's a pretty handy tool. All right, so I'm gonna give that a bit more time to dry before I start sanding away there. Uh, just a few other pieces to show you here. These are um, these tanks that go on the sides of the uh, plane or attached to the, the wings. 
Um, these also came in two halves, and you can see the seams pretty well hidden here. Um, the plane on the show did not have these attached to the wings. They actually were attached to the bottom of the ship, but uh, um, this has no way to really do that, so I'm going to just build it the way the instructions uh, have it outlined. Uh, the one on the TV show had these on the bottom of the plane, and uh, the missiles were attached to the wings. So it will be a little bit different than what we see on the TV show. This is the tail section here. had a seam at the bottom, which I uh, uh, applied the pro weld adhesive to, and it worked pretty well uh, with hiding that one. Okay, so before I move on, I uh, did want to introduce you here to Captain Christopher. He, of course, is the pilot of Blue J-4. Um, I watched the episode the other night just to kind of see how he was dressed. He had an orange jumpsuit with these black uh, boots and gloves, and he also had a helmet that was uh, painted white with this gold trim and these little lightning bolts here at the top. So, uh, incidentally, you know, when you're working with fine figures like that, the best thing to uh, have is a uh, fine tip brush like this. Uh, because it does allow you to um, apply paint to these small little details. Um, he was first airbrush uh, orange, and then I used um, a brush like this to, um, to paint the little details here. And the uh, lightning bolts here that you see on the gold trim there uh, were um, made with this little marker. Uh, so this is just a fine tip permanent marker here, um, because there's just no way I, I could really paint that with a brush. Um, so uh, you can see it, it turned out uh, pretty nice. All right, so he's just uh, kind of overseeing the construction of his plane here, and um, as soon as it's done, he'll be able to sit in his cockpit. And uh, so yeah, I'll go ahead and move on now and uh, keep you apprised of my progress. Okay, so things are moving along here. Um, one last thing I need to do here before I start applying decals and putting a, uh, the final touches on this model is I need to paint this section black. So I have the area masked off here. I use this blue masking tape. And um, again, I wanted to show you how this uh, paper here can come in handy. This is a, a masking paper that you can find at Home Depot, pretty inexpensive. So if you have one section to paint here, and now some guys are really good with an airbrush, they will not spray the rest of the model, but I'm just not going to take a chance here. And uh, so if you have to um, you know, shade the rest of the model or, uh, or protect it from getting um, paint on it, uh, you can easily use this paper here just to uh, mask a section off that you need with tape and then use the paper now to uh, basically cover the rest of the model, and that's what I've done here. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead now and use my airbrush to uh, paint this black section, and then I will show you the completed kit. All right, everybody, so here is the completed F-104 Starfighter, or Blue J-4. Um, this is a 148 scale model that was um, sold by Monogram. Uh, it is an older kit. I'm not sure you can find it. I'm sure you can still find kits of the F-104 Starfighter, but this, again, was a kit I found at a show. And um, so overall, the model was very straightforward to build. Uh, really wasn't that difficult to put together, but um, what did prove to be a source of frustration was the paint that I used. Uh, this particular plane I've always seen in museums or on TV as being really shiny. So I decided to choose a tester's chrome color. And uh, at first when I applied it, I thought it was looking great, but the drying time makes it a little difficult to handle. So you have to be very patient with it. And I was a bit careless, and you'll see there's definitely some smudges on the surface of the plane. And I tried to repaint it, but, you know, it just uh, turned out to be more of a mess than I thought it would. Um, so I decided just to continue with the project, just put it together. So, uh, yeah, you'll definitely see some smudges along the fuselage here. Um, but I wanted to point out one thing here, um, the nose of the airplane, this is the area I was masking off, you can see it turned out pretty nice. And um, what I wanted to say about this is that it definitely underscores the importance of having an airbrush. Uh, you know, for a long time I really didn't use a full-fledged airbrush, I used a few things from testers, as you can see in one of my previous videos. And, um, you know, they worked okay, but uh, I can tell you that if you really want to apply this type of detailing, an airbrush is the way to go. Uh, I made that jump and, uh, you know, I was a bit intimidated at first using it, but it really isn't that bad. Uh, but um, you can also see, too, along uh, the uh, cockpit area, you see the uh, frame of the cockpit was painted, and that was done with an airbrush, too. Um, I applied masking tape uh, and just exposed the uh, areas that needed to be painted. Uh, this front section here, I actually used liquid mask. But the airbrush, again, allows you to apply just a small amount of paint that you need so that it doesn't bleed and uh, doesn't goop up on you there. Um, so again, if you haven't uh, worked with the airbrush, don't be too afraid. Um, 
I should probably do a segment on what I've done with an airbrush and what my experiences have been. Uh, but uh, again, it really does provide you the opportunity to, uh, to uh, apply this type of detailing. All right, so overall, as I said, I thought this model turned out okay. What I plan to do with it, actually, is to take some photos. Uh, if you follow me on Flickr, uh, you'll see that I do work with Photoshop. And uh, what I plan to do is take photos of this one and combine it with photos of my TOS Enterprise that you see out in the distance. And uh, hopefully create some, or recreate some scenes of the episode Tomorrow is Yesterday as this ship confronts the Enterprise. All right, so if you have any other questions, feel free to email me. Um, as always, I do appreciate you watching. And my next project should be the Mobius um, original Battlestar Galactica Viper. Um, I'm going to light that one as well as use um, the photo etch parts, which I'm, which I'm still uh, waiting for. And uh, I'll get that one started as soon as those, uh, those get in. All right, so again, thanks for watching, and uh, I will see you next time.